All right, anybody in this room ever heard of improv everywhere? Oh, good. Did you hear them or were you just like raising your hand? No, I, I oh. yes. I oh, okay. All right, well, anybody here ever hear of the uh, Grand Central Station freeze incident? All right, well, everybody's in for a treat today. All right, this, this group called Improv Everywhere is a group of eccentric individuals who get together in masses of 100, 200 people and play big pranks in public. These people are people after my own heart, and they have accomplished what I'm out to accomplish in this world. So I'm just going to tell you a few stories of some of the great things they pulled off. I'll start with the Grand Central Station incident. What they did was they got together in New York City, in Grand Central Station, and they rallied outside in the park with their ringleader on a megaphone outside, announcing the plans of what they were going to do. And all they did was just get together, and when somebody gave a signal, they all just stopped and did motion and held it for two or three minutes. So there was one example of somebody who was just walking along, looking at his cell phone, just stopped like this. And then there was, I remember somebody else just kind of standing like this. And the great thing about this was that somebody walked around with a hidden video camera taping what people's reactions were. And like people were just kind of like looking around like, what is wrong with these people? This is great. So then some people, the comments were like, is this some kind of a protest or maybe it's a theater group or whatever. And then after two or three minutes, just like clockwork, they all just got and started moving again, like nothing happened. And the whole Grand Central Station all started applauding. It was just great. So what they do is when they do something like this, they take videos of it and they write a little diary and a journal of what they did. And something else that they did that caught my attention was they all went to the Home Depot one day and they all went shopping in slow motion. So they all like got their carts and they were just kind of like walking like this. <laughs> oh, it's great, yeah. And I, I saw one picture of it was like somebody was picking something off off a shelf and they were just kind of like just reaching over real slow and then taking it and then so they all walked around and again they had videotapes of people watching and it's the same thing as always. It's like, oh my God, what is going on here? Uh, one of my favorite ones was Best Buy. What they did was they put out an announcement to the whole group and they said, okay, everybody buy a blue polo shirt and a tan pair of pants and a newspaper. So I'm sure they must have gotten all juiced up. And then they got there and said, okay, the newspaper you bought, take it and throw it away. That was a red herring. They were just doing that to distract them and so that they wouldn't figure out what they were up to. So they all dressed up with a blue polo shirt and tan pants and just started walking into a Best Buy in New York City and standing around. And they were just kind of like, you know, and this lady instructed us that if any customer asked a question about anything, to just answer it. Say, oh yeah, I know where the, the cell phone is or whatever. So, and then if an employee came over or a manager, they'd just pretend like they were shopping. <laughs> and if anybody specifically asked if they worked there, they'd say, no, I don't know what you're talking about. So apparently, somebody took a video camera box, pretended they were coming to return it, cut a hole in the side of it, and started walking around with a little hidden camera in there just to tape what people were reacting, all these Best Buy employees standing around. <laughs> apparently, the management caught on to what was going on, and they started just, I mean, the security, you know, you got to figure these are the kind of security people that uh, maybe they wanted to be police officers and they didn't make the cut, yeah. so they just jumped all over that. So like, all right, we got a code 47 or whatever, and they were just all, so apparently they, they did call the police, but they came and said, well, they haven't actually committed a crime. I mean, they haven't stolen anything. All you can do is ask them to leave. <laughs> so the manager ended up, they ended up kicking them all out one after another, and then somebody ended up trying to chase them down the street. Like, they actually have a picture of this manager, like, stalking down the street, talking on a walkie-talkie, like that somebody was going to go after them, saying, no, they're headed down 31st Street or something like that. <laughs> My favorite one, though, so far of the ones I've read, and I'm going to be doing some more reading on this group to find out what else they pulled up, was called No Pants 2006. They got together, and I don't know how many people got involved in this. I would figure it's probably at least 50 or so. They all went on the subway without wearing pants. And they're all like wearing boxer shorts or whatever. They took pictures of this too. They actually did it. So the plan originally was to all ride the subway up to a certain stop, and then somebody was going to get on the subway selling pants for a dollar a pair. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the plans got thwarted when somebody saw what was going on and figured like some protest or civil disobedience or something like that was starting, and they, they stopped the train and started pulling people off it. Yeah, apparently a number of the, the improv everywhere crowd was actually handcuffed and arrested for uh, disorderly conduct. 
But the thing is, they researched it and said they hadn't actually broken any laws by doing it because there was there is no law that says you have to wear pants. No. I mean, you have to wear something, obviously, <laughs> but not necessarily pants. It's a welcome around the chair. It's not too small. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, there's actually they documented a number of cases of other people wearing less clothing than they did in public, like the <laughs> naked cowboy. Uh, yeah. So. They didn't end up actually having any charges stick, but so that's, I mean, we might have to be a little bit careful about this, but I'm thinking that they've really inspired me that you come up with a funny idea to do something and you can get a lot of people to come do it. See, I've been limited to the pranks so that I can do by myself, but I'm thinking, you know, I can start an improv everywhere troop in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm thinking, you know, just what would it be like if the entire city of Raleigh showed up for work one day without wearing pants? and wore like, you know, the Groucho Marx glasses with the big nose and the mustache. But I mean like a thousand people all at one time. So there's, there's enormous potential in this. But I thought, what if you applied this to a directed purpose? Like we got elections coming up. I mean, imagine if we all went to, you know, got a, a thousand people together and went to the opposing party's political rally when one of the candidates was talking and all of a sudden put on big smiley face masks or something. But I mean just like all at one time. And the idea is like, you know, you just startle them and then they're just standing like back there and then watch their, you know, secret service detail, like all shuffling around, like thinking something's going on or whatever. I mean, it'd just be great to watch the reactions. So I think I got to do this, but, um, so that's all I have to say. Definitely check out improveverywhere.com for some great ideas the next time you're bored on a Saturday night. And that's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster.